Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Penburn Farmer today. We are pretty much picking up some bales. Um, bought some bales at the shop. Uh, figured out what the issue with the buy bales mod was, by the way. It was the uh, realistic beacon like mod, so that's gone. Um, <laughs> so we can now get the, uh, the feed mixer running properly. Won't be able to buy grass bales, but that's not too big of an issue. We'll have some grass soon. It is early spring. Uh, a lot that I want to get done in this game day. I want to get as much of the plowing done as I possibly can, because as you can see, the ground temperature is zero. No crops will grow in this condition, which is good, because that means we can get the um, groundwork done. We can get the plowing done. So we got one, two, at least two, maybe three fields to plow up. Gonna get some big equipment for that. I uh, forgot to turn off the creative money. My walking speed is set to eight because I was just checking stuff out for the video. There we go. So, we do have some fields we can plant now. There's no point because whatever crop we put, I think grass is the exception. Whatever crop we put will not do a thing right now. Um, so basically, the plan is we're gonna just get the feed mixer running. I do have a new tractor that uh, I showed off on Selby and I was very happy with. Uh, and it is that Deutz Agrostar over there. Hidden with the sweeper. We'll be doing a yard tidying episode sometime soon. And because I'm lazy, I am going to unload this thing directly into the feed mixer, hopefully. That should be good enough. Why? I picked up some bales and we can just flip the rest in. Fantastic. That should now be producing because it's got 32,000 litres, uh, 72,000 litres of straw. 26 and a half of silage and 56 of grass. That should now be producing. There's some grass stuck there. That's fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to blip the time real quick. There we go. We're doing well. So that's pretty much everything we need to do with the Massey. Now with the T6 here, I'm going to abandon this field for now. Actually, not even the T6 is needed. Uh, I actually need to go grab, and this is why I had super speed turned on. I need to go grab the class, because as you can see, the last of the manure has been put into this spreader. And uh, don't plan on using the cheaty bucket this time around. You're going to see how far 13,000 litres of manure will get me. Probably not very, but. Uh, it's worth a try. Let's close the back of that so I don't accidentally start spreading. And we're going to help into field 7, which is already ploughed. We're going to get spreading up in there. Um, now I found out what the issue with the slow speed is. That is the fuel usage mod, which is now limiting my speed on anything that's not, I guess, concrete. And for some reason the roads in Penburn are all detecting as mud. <laughs> so I'm limited to pretty much 30 kilometers an hour, 20, 30 kilometers an hour, which isn't a bad thing to be quite honest. It doesn't matter too, too much because I w it's not a big map. On a bigger map I would be complaining a bit more, but on Penburn that's kind of fine because you're not going to be wanting to get up to that speed anyway. It's actually convenient. I'm going to bop through the hedge here because reasons of quickness. You can see we don't have much of this field to do, uh, or left to do. So 13,000 litres might just actually be enough uh, manure to do it. So let's get the spreader open and start spreading. I should have the... I forgot to turn it on. I've got the working with adjustment mod and I keep forgetting to turn it on. I am truly a genius. Um, but that's not a big deal. That's not the biggest deal ever. It doesn't matter too much. Should probably say real quick, seeing as we're only about five minutes into the video, somehow, that uh, today's second video at 4pm is actually going to be Selby. 
I'm moving things around a small bit because I want a bit more time to work on the uh, role plays from now on. I haven't been too happy with the way they've been coming out on old streams. I want Thornton to come out well. So I'm reverting to an old style that I used. And the style that I'm using from here on out with the role plays is going to be the Ventanwin style of videos. So if you watch the role plays from Ventanwin, um, you probably know what you're in for there. Going to be edits, going to be skips and, and time lapses in the middle of videos. Um, and that just it fits the, the role play video a bit more than the uncut style, I think. I know that there's a whole, you know, there's George Saunders to think about and, and Dino, but for the length of video I want to produce for the role play. Um, it's basically two or three of their videos just stacked on top of each other, so it kind of makes more sense to have a different style. And yes, I am going into the creative process, why not? Um, Thornton is going to be a challenge map, and it, the roleplay is, I think, best served when it's a challenge map to me. And my challenge on that map is going to be to get crops, basically. Because the way that I've set the map up, and during the um, setup stream I said I did some XML edits, and I said that in Discord beforehand, what I edited was the... was that the economy XML of the save? And what I did was I changed the starter fields from being a mix of arable and grassland to being all of the grassland. Every grass field on that map is owned by... Uh, my roleplay character. So there's a lot of grass work to do and a lot of bailing to do. However, uh, that's not necessarily a bad thing because you can sell silage bales without having a BGA. I should mention BGA extension is also installed on that map. So I won't be able to just fill a BGA bunker up our BGA silo and say, hey, look, I've got all of the money ever. I'm going to have to work towards that. That's going to be a £250,000 expense. Um, which, uh, come on, class, don't flip. There we go. That's why I love the roleplay. That's why I do it. Um, old streams, the challenge was, honestly, towards the end, it was keeping interested in the map. Just re keeping some vague interest in the map because it was... Starting to grind on me, that's why I wasn't too sad to leave it go. I know some of you guys actually were upset. Um, and obviously, I tried to sound a bit emotional at the end, but honestly, I was kind of... To come across a bit crass, kind of happy to see the back of it, because sometimes maps just don't grab me. And unfortunately, old streams is one of those maps. Um, Thornton really has. Just straight out the bat, yes, I love Thornton. Um, I didn't play it in 15, I regret not playing it in 15, but the joy of it is, is that now in 17, Thornton isn't a map that I know like the back of my hand, it's it's a new map to me, and I know to a lot of you guys it's an old map, it's a, you know, it's a, a friendly pat on the back to you guys, but to me it's brand new, it's exciting, that's what I kind of like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a challenger. Do I have the colored challengers installed at all? That'd be nice to get a colored one. No. So I'm just going to get a, a challenger 700. And of course, because of me, it has to be the 775. This is just for speed of plowing, by the way. And a big plow. Get the 4.8 meter one. Just so I can actually fit around the map. I've had issues with the 5 meter plow before. We'll hop into it. There we go. Magic floating bales of awesome. There we go. Bales have decided they no longer enjoy flying, so they can sail on the ground again. Uh, let's attach the plow. I know it's not as easy as pressing a button in real life. But uh, it's as close as you're probably going to get in farm sim to having to manoeuvre the 
bottom links and then attach the up li the top link and all that kind of nonsense. Yeah, you know, pressing a button in FarmSynth, that's probably going to be the closest you'll get. Now, hopefully, I'll be able to fit down these roads without much of an issue. Uh, <laughs> in real life, I'd be killing these people, but uh, just, just, just ignore the blatant murder going on at the moment. Um, actually, I can avoid this lady because it's, uh, I'm plowing the bush, but that's fine. Um, so let's just get the F1 menu up because I'm going to need to set this up the right way. Allow create fields. Uh, it is technically cultivated, but it's the plow texture, interestingly. Uh, that looks good to me. Uh, this is a bit where it's gonna get really awkward because the plow doesn't fit. Let's turn on four-wheel drive in our tracked vehicle and try and squeeze this through. Come on. You can do it, Challenger. Okay, now if I get up a bit, bit of speed, I can... Nope. I'm going to have to do the same thing here, where it's just a case of squeeze one side through first and then the other side in. It looks like... Come on. Come on, you can do this. I wonder if I were to... Lower this? Would it be a bit more helpful and nice? No. I've got an idea. What I'm going to do is I'm going to buy, temporarily, a wheel loader and a pallet fork. Now, this isn't going to be the most realistic thing ever, but it's going to work. And that's kind of the important thing right now, is for this to work. So we'll hop into this get to the wheel loader via that. The reason that I'm buying a wheel loader will become, well, is probably apparent already. I'm going to lift up the plow and then use the loader itself to push the entire assembly. This is the plan, at least. I'm going to lift the plow with the loader and use it to push the entire assembly. The reason I'm not going to use the Clark forklift, very, very simple. The Clark doesn't have enough mass. This wheel loader should. In theory. Um, I don't know how this is going to work out in practice, but there's only one way to find out, and this is the only way. Uh, also, I feel kind of pressured by time. It's like 5 o'clock at the moment, quarter past 5. I feel pressured by time because I actually want to go out and mow the lawns today, in real life. Um, Dance it is, I don't know how much petrol there is for the lawnmower, and I don't know how dry or wet the grass is, so... Um, this is going to be an interesting day for me. And I know that it's going to be a long mow, so I think once I've got this video recorded, I'm going to run uh, AFK and do that, and then hopefully not be too dead at the end of it. Uh, no, I might just wait and do the second video, because um, I don't know when sunset is, but it shouldn't be too big of a deal if I'm doing that late in the day. I mean, as far as I know, there's no petrol for the lawnmower anyway, so it's not a big loss if I don't do it today. I can just wait until the next little dry spell comes along. Which may be in the coming days. Okay, come on. Let's... Will this work? Lift the plow itself. And yes! One of my insane schemes actually worked. I know I could have just gone through the hedges, but... That was a much better way of doing it. That was a bit more legit. And now let's get plowing with our challenger. Some of you are probably wondering why I keep coming to the challenger as a go-to tractor. There's two reasons. Number one is I really enjoy Dino's videos with the challenger. Number two is I think it's a cool tractor regardless. Number three this is kind of my signature tractor, is the Challenger MT-700. Um, it's just... I don't know, I, I just have this weird affinity to it. I like the fact that it's effectively a tank, which is why it is nicknamed 
uh, well, mini tank tour. Tank tour is actually the MT800E, 700 series. Still a good tractor, but it's not quite a tank tour. Also, it's really easy to uh, maneuver and do some work with this. Do feel, doing field work with this is a, a real breeze because it's just basically pointed in the right direction and you can spin on the spot. So for those of you who are undoubtedly wondering about the weird affinity with ch challengers, that's why it's ju it's ju it's easier to work with. It's the easiest piece of equipment to work with in the game. And uh, definitely a lot but I'm not going to say better, but it's a lot more different than just getting six fe different kinds of fent. It's different than a wheeled tractor, and I like being different. So we're just going to kind of cut in a headland first. You can hear some thunking and clunking when I was doing that. That was me changing, literally changing gears, because I got drive control on. I've got the shuttle mapped to um, the gear stick of my G27. So if you hear a clunk, like that, or like that, that was my me physically moving the gear stick forwards and backwards. Or in that case, backwards and forwards. Um, it just gives me a better idea of which way I want the tractor to go. Now, I'm not using head tracking today for reasons of I didn't open up open track. Yeah, it's a reason. Also, I'm kind of limiting a bit more the, uh, come on, the uh, head tracking to Thornton in the roleplay, because that's going to be almost all head tracked, and almost all first person perspective, um, except when I do some of the drone shots with the bailing, because it's a bit easier for me to actually see what's going on. So these videos are going to be third person primarily, the role play is going to be more first person. It just gives a nice balance on the channel I think. And I will occasionally just use first person in these videos. Um, when I'm mowing or something like that, when I actually, the first person perspective does help me. So let's get this corner in like that. And now... We just need to go up and down, but first, there's a little matter of the wheel loader we need to send back. Uh, I did purchase, I think. Did I purchase it? I did purchase it. So let's send that back, and let's send that back. And that's that sent back, so now we are good to plow. Um, we will be using the Coon Cedar that came with the Coon DLC. Like I said, the only reason I'm using this plow, um, the Jimper, is basically because it's the quickest way to plow. It's a straight plow, there's no need to do an offset. I could, if I wanted to, just use GPS with this and sit back and relax, but I kind of like turning around. I like at least trying to keep some sort of a straight line. I'm going to just cut in here and get a bit of a, an angle cut there. Another angle cut there. The reason for that is just so that it blends in nicely with the rest of the field. And now you see why I like the Challenger. You slow it down enough, you can just turn on the spot. Um, I think that's why a lot of farmers use it. And for and before anybody complains about this thing being used to plow, I should point out. Originally, tractors like this with the tracks were plowing tractors. They were originally meant to go out on the field in conditions like this, where you needed all of the power you could possibly get input down at once, which is why they're tracked, uh, with a minimal, uh, the best weight spread you can get. That's a track, pretty much. You can't beat a tracked vehicle for maximum power output or maximal efficient power output versus um, 
spurt of mass. So I know somebody's going to complain about me using a challenger to plow, but to them I say, what el what good else is a chan? What? <laughs> I'll eventually get my sentence out. What good is a challenger if not for plowing? Because you've got your tracks, which give you the most efficient power output possible. You've got a big engine, which means you'll be getting up to the maximum speed the plow will allow you to go at. You've got, again, the tracks which will spread the, the weight, and it's a wide enough tractor as is. And you've got a really, really small turning circle, which means you only really need to cut a very thin headland to um, actually get turned around in. For example, if I just do a little reverse back here, just give myself space to do this, I can turn in that space there pretty easily without clipping the hedge too much. And yes, there's a small gap, but that's not bad. That's really good. That said, I'm sure there's somebody going to find reason to complain about the way that I'm doing things or, or something that I've done because it's not quite the way that they do it or that their father would do it or their father's father would do it. It's a farm. People do it differently. I know farmers, and I've spoken to them, were, who have said, if potatoes aren't in the ground by St. Patrick's Day, there won't be a good harvest. If you can't get your potatoes into the ground by St. Patrick's Day, you won't be getting a good harvest of potatoes. Uh, and I know people who... These same people will say, oh, that potato's e really easy to grow. And then have a big argument about how easy a very specific potato is to grow because maybe the other person thinks or believes or has experience of a different variety of potato that they think is really easy to grow. They think is the easiest. I've seen this happen. I've seen like, heated discussions about what potato is best to grow in Ireland uh, in what year is it? 2014 or 2015? seen it. So, you know, maybe I don't do things the way that you would like them to be done. This is the way I do it. Number one, every farmer is going to do things slightly differently. Number two, this is kind of the more important thing, this isn't real life. This is farm sim. This is a game. It's an arcade game, basically. Yeah, I've got the game model to be more realistic, but it's still, at its heart, an arcade experience. You know, there's no breaking of, in this case, tines on the plow, if you go too quickly, because it is a chisel plow. Um, you know, that bar at the back, the uh, aerator, doesn't have issues. None of the tines on that will break. I don't have to worry about the engine speed or, or heat or anything of the Challenger. If there's never any slippage of, as as such. I can leave all the equipment out in the rain forever and there will be no real negative recourse for that. You know, it's, a, it's an arcade game and also I've got a billion pounds, you know, I can turn that on and off at will. That's, you don't just have a magical bank account that you can access that has a million pounds, in, a billion pounds in it. They keep stopping itself up whenever you close it. Whenever you decide to not use it. You know, people who complain about farm server are weird, in my opinion. Yeah, you know, I'd make jokes with Landy and Sam and all that that, oh, you're doing it wrong. I, yeah. The only time that it is legitimate is when they've forgotten to lower the header on a harvester. Or forgotten to buy a field. And the game just shouts at them afterwards, like, why didn't you do this? Chris, Chris the Irish Gamer is the best ex example. He tried to do, I think, a beet harvest on a field he didn't even own. And the game was shouting at him. He was clueless. He was like, why isn't this working? Why, why, why am I able to top the beets but not harvest them? And the field wasn't actually bought. Landy, he tried to use the... Um, Homer Terraphalus with the header up, which he had presumed it had gone down, he didn't. Simulate has asked me on a few occasions how to do silage. I myself make mistakes fairly regularly, like... 
What have I done that's really stupid lately? Well, constantly flipping things over. I got the, um... The, the uh... 7R. That everybody loves so much. It came out over the weekend. I was... I was setting up to record um, yesterday's video. The time lapse on Selby. I rolled that thing through 360 degrees off camera. I was on TeamSpeak at the time and I said to Landy, yeah, the, t the 7 is still a bit tippy because the, the one that got leaked originally was a bit tippy, would go up on three wheels a lot. I said, yeah, it's a bit tippy. What? He said, what do you mean? I said, well, I've rolled it. The completely 360 degree roll landed back on all four wheels and just continued as, no as if nothing happened, but, you know, it, it does. And it's hard to ignore stuff when it happens like that. Even if it does ha happen off camera. And a lot of the stupid things we do are off camera. <laughs> because it's just easier to, you know, cut corners there. There's a lot less criticism if we use 17 different types of bail stacker to test off camera. Or if we, you know, get in the biggest plow in the game off camera because it's quicker. Honestly, if I was doing this off camera, I'd have a huge plow and it'd be look ridiculous, and I'd have it probably on the smallest tractor I could get. But that's just the way off camera work happens on YouTube. And if you think that we all play realistically, 100% realistically, all the time, the way that we do in videos and by and large in streams, you're sadly mistaken. We have to we have to take the same corners. I cut them in the same way that a lot of the more casual, like really heavily casual people who don't care about realism, don't care about the simulation aspect of the game. We cut those corners because we gotta, YouTubers have this weird double life where at the same time we have to be realistic to an extent or we have to do things in a very certain way and if we don't, you guys will shout at us. But at the same time, we got to do things quickly off camera. Because we got to have different videos every day. Uh, or at least something different every day. And we can't do that if we're playing the same way we're doing videos off camera. Because number one, we'll never have any time to sleep. Or relax, or do anything that we want to do. And number two, it would just take way too long. We just we'd get burnt out of the game in a matter of days. Um, so we occasionally download the dumbest, stupidest mod we can find and we use it off camera. Because it's quicker, it's the quickest option. And I know that'll shock some people to know that We'll say Simulate, for example, does l use the really dumb mods occasionally, and he will do things in a ridiculously unrealistic manner. But it's how we do things off camera, it's how we have to. We can't do all realistic all the time. And I think on that bombshell, it's a, that bombshell is a good point to end the video on. So I will leave you by saying, uh, I've been Rainbow Dave, you've been watching Farming Simulator 17 on Penberlin Farm. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you didn't or if you haven't already. Until next time, stay safe and goodbye.